Hey everybody, today Rado previews a prototype of Meeples and Monsters, but before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, well then, welcome to the Realm of Rowan, which is under assault from all kinds of monsters, and we have to marshal our forces by doing bag building, f bags full of meeples that will fight off the terrible foes, while also building up the town. Now I'm going to show you how it works today in a two-player run-through. Okay, so I've got the game mostly set up, and I should say I am playing with the optional Towers variant, where there are these four towers on the edges of town uh, that basically provide kind of like common quests that everybody could do. You can play the game a bit simply if you leave these out of the game. Speaking of quests, each player starts with two quests, and I should say, folks, this is a prototype, so bear in mind, my quests have no name. But I do know I want to defeat a monster using two clerics, which will score me two points and get me a warrior to, uh, to join my uh, band of defenders. And if I do not finish this quest by the end of the game, I will lose one point. And I've also got this one. I need to defeat a monster with two warriors. So, hey, I could get the warriors. Although I could get the clerics, I need to defeat this. So, these might work well together. Jen has got her own quest. And uh, in addition to our starting quest, we have our bag. There are ten meeples in here. Seven of them are peasants, and three of them represent corruption that will slow us down. That kind of clogs our bag up. And at the beginning of the game, we have a handful of four meeples. So we each draw four. Uh, one, two, three, four. All right. So my starting hand, I drew one corruption, which is the only meeple that does not have these cool little, um, you know, characters on them. If you look, these are my mighty peasants who are ready to go in and help build up the town to save the day. So I've got three peasants and one corruption. Jen, meanwhile, she also, with the same setup, draws four. One, two, three, four. And, wow, she drew none of her corruption. She's got four meeples. All right. So that means Jen's going to have a better start turn than me. And to make up for that, as part of setup, whoever has the fewest... Uh, or, or, sorry, whoever has the most corruption, which is me, because I actually drew one of my corruption, is also the first player. Have at you, monsters! Okay, let's get going. Now, how does the game work? Well, on your turn, you're going to go through a few simple uh, phases. First, there is development, where I can send my meeples that I drew from the bag that are sitting over here in the tavern, I can send them to these worker placement spots. Uh, if I have any prestige units, I can bring them over here to lose some victory points and upgrade them. And you can see there's a whole bunch of cards that will upgrade my mages, my clerics, my knights, and my warriors, and my paladins. Now, as it has right now, I haven't recruited any of those yet. So, this space is useless. But I can come over here. I can either act, I can build up the city, because you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight spaces for rent. I can use two of my peasants to come to this space. And that means I can build the Colosseum, the Levy Station, the Mage Academy, or the House of Lords. And of course, there's a whole bunch more buildings that I'll be building over the course of the game too. So, I could, I could build um, using two meeples. Or, if I wanted to spare some meeples, I could come to this spot instead, um, which only requires one meeple. I should say one peasant meeple. That's what the uh, white symbol or the white meeple is. So I could use one peasant to build instead of two. And that means I could save my other peasant for the next phase. But there's a downside. Um, this peasant, to get the building built, will have to call in a buddy. Which means I take one from the supply and basically add it to my collection of meeples. Which means I am clogging up my deck with more peasants. Because peasants aren't as good as shaman and uh, warriors and all the rest of it. So, but I think I'm going to do this because that means I keep two meeples, two peasants, at the ready for the next phase. Okay, now... So, instead of uh, choosing this one, I chose to build with this one. I don't have any special meeples that I could upgrade. Uh, again, the shaman, the mage... Or I'm sorry, no, not sorry, the shaman. The shaman, ranger, and paladin, those are prestige warriors. Uh, they're a bit trickier to get. Regular um, warriors are the blue, the, the black knight, the red cleric, and the yellow mage. But I don't have any of those right now, so I can't send them over here to train them and make them more powerful. So... First of all, I deploy whichever meeples I'm going to to these and one of these. And I don't have to deploy any. I could skip on building right now, but I, I'm definitely incentivized to build. And since I used only one, I've added another meeple to my overall collection of meeples. And now, I'm going to build. 
the Colosseum, the Levy Station, the Mage Academy, or the House of Lords? Which one do I want to build? Right, the House of Lords says, hey, I can send any, that's what this brown symbol is, I could send any meeple here to give myself another peasant and to make my knights one stronger for that round. Now, I don't have any knights right now, so that's not particularly good. The Levy Station, I can send a warrior and any other meeple to recruit another warrior and make all my peasants stronger to fight. Uh, again, I don't have any warriors. The Colosseum, I can come here with either a warrior or a, a peasant. And if I haven't been kicked out of the Colosseum by my opponents, at the beginning of my next turn, I can score some victory points. Or I can I could build the Mage Academy, which again, like the Colosseum, says that, hey, if I come here with a peasant or a mage instead of a warrior, and I don't get kicked out of the Mage Academy, at the beginning of my next turn, I'll be able to um, recruit additional meeples. So I, which, I mean, I'll be able to draw more meeples than the normal four. So that's pretty cool. I might want to go for that. Let's uh, say that that's what I'm going to build. That these This one peasant came over here, brought a buddy, which means I now have an extra peasant in my uh, bag, or will eventually go to my bag, to build the Mage Academy. And now I've got to put it in one of these four spots. And seeing as how I have a uh, quest that says, I need clerics to... I need to feed a monster with clerics to complete this quest. Let's go on ahead and build it over here. Because for building it over here, I get a cleric immediately. Hooray! -de -do 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 -do. I've got a cleric. They are going to come over here into my lodgings, which means I won't actually be able to use them until I've emptied out my bag and then refilled my bag and then draw it. But So I'm starting to build up a stronger fighting force with a, with a level 1 cleric over there. All right. So uh, that was that. And um, I am now, because I've built this Mage Academy, I can now use it because I'm finished with this first phase where we use these worker spots. Now I'm going to move on to the next phase where any meeples I've still got, I can deploy them to any of these buildings. And I think I'll deploy one of my guys over here to the Mage Academy. Okay, now I have to mark him as mine. That's why I have a couple of these little things to say, this peasant belongs to the green player. And I could have come here with a mage instead, but a peasant's just fine. And what's going to happen is, if this guy doesn't get kicked out, because Jen might bump me, but if she doesn't bump me, at the beginning of my next turn, I will get to draw one. So I'll have five meeples to draw from the bag instead of four. Now, if I send a mage over here, I would actually get to draw two additional. But I don't have any mages. I haven't recruited any yet. All right, so anyway. So, and now I've still got one more peasant. And so I can't come here now. I could send this peasant over to the university, um, where any type of meeple could go to recruit a mage, which means the Mage Academy would be better for me in the future. Um, now, if I wanted to get another cleric, I would have to come over here with two meeples, one of which I would permanently lose, and that would get me a mage. So, I could, instead of sending over to the Mage Academy, I could come over here and give myself a second mage, because then, if on a turn I could get both mages into play and kill a monster with them, I would complete my quest name, which has yet to have a name. So that's cool, but no, I really want to do the Mage Academy, which means, uh, well, I can't come to the Cathedral because I don't have two extras, because... These corruption meeples, they just represent corruption, sloth, laziness, uh, things that get in the way. I can't actually use these for anything, which is why they're kind of a bummer when you draw them out of the bag. Which is why I was the first player, because I had fewer meeples. Jen's got four peasants to work with. All right, I'm going to come over here to the university. This is the other main thing that I can do, because I need two meeples over here at the castle. I need three meeples over here in the nearby villages, and I need two meeples at the cathedral. All righty. And so, what... All right, so I have now placed all of our remaining meeples that are available to me because you can't usually you cannot use these uh, corruption meeples for anything there are some special cases where you can but anyway after i have placed all of them because there was one other place i could have sent these instead of sending them to these various buildings i could have instead sent them out to fight all the bad guys that are attacking the city. Now, these were drawn randomly from the deck. There's always, at the beginning of your turn, six monsters. And right now, we've got two monsters, a bandit and a skeleton over here in this section of town, a skeleton and another bandit over here, and a skeleton and a bandit. Wow, that's a nice uh, uh, distribution of stuff. 
And if I wanted to, I could have, instead of coming to university to recruit and coming to the Mage Academy to draw more, I could have said, no, these brave meeples will come over here to fight this skeleton. This skeleton has a total of two hit points, and if I could defeat it, I'll score one victory point. Now, peasants, by default, do one point of damage, which is why these two guys working together could beat this skeleton, or this skeleton, or this skeleton. Right. So, ooh, ooh. oh, I'm, st I'm starting to think about stuff a little bit. So, I mean, I could do this, but I'd rather go out and do this stuff. But now, I'm going ma to make one slight adjustment, I think. Remember, um, if, I, if I rewind a little bit, sorry, folks, I know this drives me nuts, but I'm thinking about this a little bit more. I've got a better idea. Before, um, I, you know, right now, I'm not upgrading anybody. I'm placing a building. And I said I was going to place the Mage Academy over here, which would get me a mage. Or, you know, or, or, you know, or, I'm sorry, a uh, cleric. I didn't want that cleric. Instead, I built over here in this part of town. Where, for a bonus, unfortunately, I get another peasant. And peasants are the weakest characters. They kind of clog up your bag. But anyway, this peasant goes to lodgings, and I get a warrior. All right. So I got two meeples instead of one over here. One really good, and one kind of meh. But anyway, so I built the Mage Academy over there. Then... Finally, folks, I've told you everything I could possibly do. These guys could come over here and fight. Um, they could come over here and to the university so that I get more mages. Or they can go to the Mage Academy, which I still want to do. But you'll see why I changed my mind. The mage, visiting the Mage Academy in this area is the better way to go because, remember, there's these six monsters. Now, I uh, these monsters are going to cause problems. Even if we don't fight them, they can be a problem for us. Because if I want to do an action in this section of, of the board, because there are two or more monsters uh, that are attacking this section, this section is considered overrun. And as you notice right there, there is a little reminder that if, if there's only... If there's only one monster in this section, hey, the, the, this section of the city's not in too much trouble. Just go ahead and do whatever you want to do in this section. But if there are two monsters, then this is overrun. And what that means is there are meeples, regular little peasants, who are in great danger. They're terrified that their section is being overrun. Um, and that means if I do an action in this section of the city, I... I'm going to have to take an extra meeple cost to complete this action. And remember, these peasants, they kind of clog up my bag. And so, I do want to come to the university using this meeple to get a mage, which will come in handy at the Mage Academy. But because I'm doing it in an overrun section of the city, I ended up picking up a second meeple. Because these people who were in danger, they saw, oh look, something's happening in the city. And they ran over here to join my bag and slow me down from getting the really good meeples that I want to draw and drawing more peasants instead. That is why, if you can, you ideally want to send your workers, your meeples, to a section of town that has no monsters attacking or only one monster attacking. And that's why it was better to have the academy over here. Because if I'd had the academy over here, this is an overrun section, and you guessed it, that means another peasant comes into the mix. I didn't want that, which is why it was better to build down here. And unfortunately, I did end up getting another peasant, but I got a warrior. And now, I'm not going to pick up any more peasants because this is a safe neck of the woods and there aren't any peasants who are going to jump on me and try to uh, you know, come to safety. So, I'm going to resolve everything. The way you resolve the Mage Academy is you put this little marker here to say, this is my meeple, and hopefully he's going to stay here. If Jen doesn't bump me, then at the beginning of my next turn, I'll draw five meeples instead of four. Meanwhile, I recruited the mage, and all of these, plus these, go into my lodgings. They're basically my discard pile, if you think of this like a deck builder, because this is basically a meeple-based bag builder. Now, normally, um, at, yeah, uh, the last thing you do in a round is you activate all the stuff, and then you take all of your spent meeples, and they go to your lodgings. However, the academy is unique one. That's what this little symbol here means, that these meeples stick around so they can activate on the following turn. And so, that is what I did. And now, at the end of the turn, I... Uh, any meeples that I didn't use, they also go over to the lodgings. I end up drawing four more. Although over the course of the game, that will increase. You might be drawing five or six or even more around. So I've got one, two, three, four, and drat. I've got 
two more corruption. But I only started with three. So I've gone through all my corruption now. And um, only two peasants to do stuff next round. That's uh, not going to be very exciting. But worry about that. Also, if I killed any monsters, the remaining ones would slide over and new ones would come out. But I didn't fight any monsters. And if I built any buildings, a new one comes out. All right. My turn is over. It is Jen's turn with her mighty four uh, meeples that she's got access to. Now, I haven't actually looked at it yet. Let's see what her quests are. All right, so she's got this one to have at least um, five warriors in her collection at the end of the game, which means she will score four points. And if she is not the master of the Ironwood Legion, this quest actually has a name, she'll lose a point. So this is something over the course of the game she has to focus on. She wants to be collecting lots of blue meeples, lots of warriors. And also, hey, I, I thought I shuffled this deck pretty well. Jen's got uh, have three black knights, which makes her the master of the Ebony Knight. So she has definitely got these two goals to score eight points at the end of the game if, in her collection, she's got the at least five blues and at least three black. All right, so... That is, those are her goals, and she is off to the races. She has no corruption. She's got four meeples, which means, I think, she can just go on ahead and um, not have to take on extra peasants by, I, you know, I uh, saved a little bit of work by getting extra peasants so I could build. Jen's just going to use two of her basics and build one of these buildings. And she would have loved to have built in this space because she wants to get that warrior because she's got that quest to get five warriors. But, oh... Oh, oh, oh. You know what? No. I think Jen's going to um, do the same thing I did. She's going to build on the cheap, which means another peasant shows up to clog up her deck. But she wants to save all three of these. Now, she doesn't have to. She doesn't have to build at all. But, I mean, the sooner you build, the sooner you get access to all of these options. So, I think Jen... All right. She's done placing. She has no specials. She chose to build this way. She's still got these ones in her tavern. And what is she building? Uh, yeah, she says a mage's workshop would be kind of nice. She will go on ahead and spend that. And she will give herself a mage. Because she's building in this spot, she gets a mage. All right, that will she'll draw later. And that's nice because the mage is the only thing that can come to the mage's workshop. And the mage academy is much better to go there with the mage. So in this game, because these two buildings have been built, mages, the yellow meeples, are going to be much more valuable. These might not have been built. These might not have even shown up because there's a whole bunch of different buildings that show up every time you play. So anyway, so Jen uh, did her worker placement in these spots and then started activating. She built the mage's workshop. Now she goes on to the rest of her turn where she's got three of these. And now, remember, here's why I was nervous. Because I'm hoping Jen does not use one of her meeples. Because she can come here. And if she comes here, she kicks me out. And this guy didn't do anything. And I kind of wasted him. And Jen would like to do that. She doesn't want me to get an extra draw next turn. But I think she's going to. Because she is going to use all three of these. This says she has to send at least one peasant and two other meeples of your choosing. Which could be peasants as well. So Jen's sending all three of her peasants here. And... She is done deploying. She had three peasants. She put them all on this building. She is not fighting off monsters. She's got three meeples. She could beat this bandit. Um, or, hey, she could uh, spend two over here to beat this skeleton. And then she could come over here to the university and get another mage. That'd be a possibility. And that's actually interesting. Because here's the deal. Remember how when I came here, because this area was overrun, I ended up having to take another, um, what do you call it? Another peasant? If you go to a space that's overrun, but you try to fight off at least one of the monsters that are in that region, then you don't take the peasant penalty. So Jen could come over here, get another mage, and because she's defeating this skeleton with her other two peasants, she won't collect another peasant because the people of this region will be safe and satisfied knowing that Jen is fighting to save them. So Jen could do that, but she's not doing any of that. She's coming over here to the villages. She's not going to pick up any peasants because, again, there's no, no, no monsters have overrun this area. And so now she's done placing all her workers. She doesn't have any more. She's going to activate. She's already activated these. Now she's going to activate these. And this says, hey, lose one of these peasants. Keep the other two and get a warrior. All right. So Jen, um, she ended up gaining a peasant, but then she got rid of one. So she's trying to keep her peasant population under control so she can draw her special meeples that much quicker and that much faster. She didn't fight any monsters off, which, by the way, is the main way we score points in this game. And it's also the timer of the game. Um, there, uh, This is the monster deck. And there's a variable number of cards in here, depending on how many players. It's a bigger deck with more players. And every time we beat monsters, new ones come out. There's also event cards in here that will make stuff happen. And the game is over, basically, um, once 
once we get to the end of the deck, there's like a couple more rounds we play, effectively. It's a little more complicated than that, but that's the basic idea. So this is the timer of the game, which means if we're not fighting monsters, if we're just doing stuff in town, well, um, that means these monsters will stick around and we have more time to build up our bag of meeples. So anyway, so Jen has done this, and now at the end of her turn, she uh, didn't kill any monsters, so no new ones come out. A new building comes out. It is a warrior's hut. Here is another way to recruit warriors and get more quest cards. You can send any two meeples here, any type of meeple, to get a warrior and draw two and get rid of one quest card. All right, so that's a cool building as well. So anyway, Jen's done all of these meeples that belong to her, go into hers, and now she's drawing four. All right, so she got two special new meeple helpers. She's probably going to have a lot of corruption now because she didn't draw any in the first round. Yeah, there's all of her corruption. So next round is not going to be quite as exciting because she's only got one peasant. Ouch. Okay, back to me. And hey, I made it. I finished my studies. Hurrah! Which means I can come back over here. And it says, at the beginning of your turn, draw one more. So, this is going to be another peasant, I think, because I've seen all my corruption. Yep. So now I've got three peasants, and I am ready to go. And what am I going to do? Alrighty. Um, unfortunately, my two specials I've got have not shown up yet. Am I going to build more buildings? Uh, because if I, if I build a spot in here, I can get another mage. I can get clerics. Or in these any of these, if I build any of these spots, I can draw two and then discard one quest card. And quest cards are can be a big source of points at the end of the game as well. Hmm. Alrighty. What do I want to do? I think... This is interesting. Oh, shoot, 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 shoot. I would love to use this mage workshop. That would be perfect. But again, I could only come here with a mage. The only mage I've recruited is stuck over here, not ready to do anything yet. Generally, when you get new troops, usually they end up going into the lodgings and you won't see them until your bag empties out and you refill and you start drawing again. Again, like a typical deck builder. So, that's kind of a bummer. But I do like that warrior hut. I think I'm going to build it. Here's the problem. i got three workers. If I do this a more efficient way, using two of my three peasants to build this without having to get and recruit more peasants, then I've only got one peasant left, which means I can't actually use it. So Jen would get first dibs on it, which means if I want to build this and use it this turn, once again, I've got to go this way, getting yet more peasants clogging up my bag. So I've got two peasants so that I can use the warrior hut. I don't want to do it, but I'm going to do it. So first, I'm, um, I am I place all my workers, and I'm going to build. And with this warrior hut, let's go on ahead. Because there's all these mages, let's get that other mage. Let's get that other mage for building there. All right, boom. All right, and so these guys are done. Now I've got two workers. Let's go to this warrior's hut. Bippity bop. And uh, get myself my second warrior, which are very, very cool. Especially once they get leveled up. Uh, level 1 warrior, there's nothing particularly special about them. They do one point of damage, just like the peasants, just like the clerics, just like the mages. But, remember, um, on a turn when I draw one of these warriors, I can send them over here to upgrade. And then they start becoming very, very interesting indeed. All the, all the different types of class, the basic classes can upgrade. But anyway, so I built the warrior's hut and then I used it. I ended up, I mean, I had to take more cursed peasants. But anyway, oh, and also the other problem, I get another peasant for building this over here. No, 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 no. Too many peasants. I already got one peasant over there. I'm building this warrior hut over here. So instead of having built here, which would have gotten me another mage, I built it over here, which says, hey, draw two quest cards and get rid of one. So, I got to draw one, two quest cards. I add them to my hand of existing, and now I get rid of one quest card. Because remember, if I don't complete these quests, I lose points at the end of the game. So, this is a new one. Um, score one victory point for each set of monsters. There's three types of monsters. The undead, and the monstrous, and the, the humanoid type monsters. So, this means I want to fight them, you know, you know, kind of split it around, so I can get a lot of points off of that. And now, uh, defeat monsters. Well, I mean, I've got a lot of these. There are different types of quests. I feel like I should shuffle this deck up a little bit more before I continue. I probably will. But anyway, i got to get rid of one of these quests now. Um, I kind of like this, uh, you know, giving me targets for different types of monsters. Maybe I'll never even bother getting clerics. I haven't gotten any yet. So maybe I say goodbye to that one, and so I keep that. So anyway, so when I built this warrior hut, I did that. But now, coming here, I get to do it again because I got another warrior, and I'm going to draw two more and get rid of one. All righty. Um, this is getting a little bit more interesting. Defeat a monster with this particular combination. Three warriors and a mage to get four points. 
And, oh, this is a problem. At the end of the game, I will get six points if, I have, if I've never killed any undead. If I only fight the monstrous and the humanoid characters, I can score six points. So this is obviously very much at odds with this one. But you know what? Let's dump this one. Let's dump the uh, go for everything. And now I just want to make sure I never fight skeletons or ghouls or any of that stuff. And so I've got four cards, four ways to score points. And, I mean, ultimately, uh, quests potentially have things down here that will give you different bonuses as well. Which is, this doesn't have show up. I really think I need to shuffle this up a little bit more. Because you guys haven't gotten to see any of the cooler, more interesting upgrade style quests. And uh, like you know, like that one. Whereas you know, it, you know, be, use all this stuff or all this group to get points and unlock a special ability, etc., etc. So I mean, there are a bunch of quests. Let's just shuffle them up a little bit more. I did shuffle them from the get go, but I was not happy with that distribution. Anyway, so uh, that was that was my turn. I built a new building and got another. But I built it over here, which got me a, um, basically netted me one more quest. And then I brought my other guys over here to give me a warrior, and I netted one more quest. And now all of you guys are very very tired. Bye bye. There you go. And um, right, a new building comes out. So far, we haven't fought anybody yet. There's the branch route in. So this is a place where if you send a cleric, all of your mages get plus one for fighting. So if this building exists, you want to get a deck, you want to try and manipulate things to have clerics and mages so you can really leverage the, the branch and root in. Anyway, at the end of my turn, I'm going to draw four more. I believe there's only one more in my bag. All right, so these slide on over. At the end of the turn, I draw, and I'm drawing four. So that means my bag is empty. I need to draw three more so everything comes back in. And I hope to start drawing some of my cool special characters. Draw three more. One, two, three. Bip bop boop. And I did! I got a warrior! Okay, nice. Um, because a warrior plus a peasant can go to the castle to get me a black knight. Which do two points of damage instead of one. And I believe, don't I have a quest for um, defeating monsters with knights? And I have a quest for defeating monsters with warriors. And I've got another quest for defeating monsters with warriors. But So, this is... I, okay, that's going to be fun. Next turn. And I got no corruption, too. So, I'll have a bigger turn. But in the meantime... It is Jen's turn. And, um, right. She's got one dinky do. This is not very exciting. All her corruption came up at once. So, first of all, she could come over here to build another building, get another benefit, but get another. Or she could say, no, Jen's going to pass. She is not going to build buildings uh, or upgrade. So, that she has this for the next phase where she's just going to come over here to the university. Although, again, if she comes to the university, she will get, but she wants those mages to start using these two special abilities. Arr. Um, but, you know, a single one can't use the warrior hut, but could just set her up. Jen's going to hope, because she can see I've got a lot of useful characters. She's going to hope that I've got better stuff to do than waste time bumping her. So this was not a particularly exciting turn. She just went to the Mage Academy, so next turn she can draw... Uh, she'll have five. So anyway, that was it. She didn't build anything. She didn't fight anything. At least uh, she. we keep staying in the blue section of town because there's no monsters over here, so we're not having to take on wayward uh, uh, peasants. Slides on over. She draws four. One, two... And then she wants to see those specials come out. No corruption. One, two, three, four. Two corruption! Oh, she is unhappy about that. Which is why she's really hoping this guy doesn't get bumped so she can at least draw one more. Back to me. And I am up. And so now I've got a tough choice. I would like, when I get to the main phase, to send them both over here so I can get a Black Knight. That would be very cool. But by the same token, I would like to send my warrior over here because upgrading warriors is easy. I don't have to give up any victory points, which I don't have because we haven't fought any monsters yet. But I get uh, a, I, I get to change my level 1 warrior into a level 2 warrior. And uh, now level 2 warrior, it just he does more damage. Not that big a deal. But once I've upgraded my warriors to level 2, if I then come here again, I have to give up victory points to upgrade them to level 3. Now they do two points of damage, and the first time um, on a turn you assign a warrior to a monster to fight, you get to pull a peasant out of the lodgings. So basically, they can get double duty out of peasants because they are so brave and inspiring, the peasants will come and fight alongside them. So I've got to decide. I've got my first special. Am I just going to upgrade him so he does more damage in the future, or am I going to save him to get a cooler? I think I'm going to save him. So, what does that mean? I'm going to, I don't, I, I'm going to build without having to uh, swell up my ranks of peasants because I've already gotten too many of them. They're clogging up my deck. So I'm just going to build something. And, oh, this is interesting. 
See, also, I could build this levy station because then I could use it um, with a peasant and a warrior to get another warrior. And my peasants get too stronger, so they'd be ev ev able to actually fight monsters by themselves. But the problem is, oh, oh this is killing me. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to come over here, save this, which means, all right, and I'm not upgrading. So I can do one of these. Is, is this type of build or this type of build? I'm doing this type of build, which means I'm getting another peasant in my bag. Oh, these peasants. Uh, but don't worry, there are ways to get rid of them, like the villages, like the cathedral, and other ones that might come up. So I'm doing this to build the levy station. And I'm going to want to go to the levy station, but I mean, uh, right, no, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Uh, I, I know what I'm doing. So, do I want to get, uh, I, I think I'll try to get another mage, because these mages are so valuable. So I'm recruiting a mage for building that levy station. Okay, I'm done with the first. Now, I've got three workers. Right, 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 right. And, yes. Yes, this is gonna this is gonna work. I am going to send. Uh, I was thinking about coming over here to get the Black Knight, but instead I'm gonna come over here to the levy station. And as you can see, I need one of any type. I'll use this peasant. I need a warrior. And now this and 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 this guy, this guy's gonna fight. This peasant is gonna fight all by himself. And I will have him fight this Blackwoods bandit, which is worth two victory points instead of one, like the skeleton. Oh, go get him! Now, how can he possibly beat him? Because remember, peasants have one. If they do one point damage, I need to do three. Um, and in fact, uh, well, that's fine, because it'll add up. Because now, I start resolving things. All the uh, workers I've done in this phase, I resolve in any order I want. I don't want to resolve him yet, because he can't do enough damage. I'll resolve the levy station, which says, hey, recruit another warrior, and all your peasants that are fighting monsters get plus two. So suddenly, this is a super powerful level three peasant who can now beat the bandit, which I have done. Hooray! So... The first kill of the game. Well done, peasant. Gives me two victory points. I am on the board. And remember, I'm going to need those points to upgrade my characters. So I've just scored points. I also save this because it might be worth more points to me at the end of the game. Because remember, I've got the quest of not killing undead. So, uh, right, anyway. So I've got that. I, I killed a bandit. Hooray. I've got my quests. I've beaten that. And uh, now, during cleanup, uh, all my spent people... Go back to the lodgings. If we fought any monsters, the uh, other ones slide down to make room for a new one. And this is a termite that wants to attack the blue section of town. And so suddenly, blue... So now we have two sections of town where if you go uh, and do worker placement stuff, you won't accrue more peasants. And now, bear in I, I should have made this a bit more clear. When I fought here, or when, when I came to the levy station, remember... I should, because this was overrun, I should have had to take another peasant. But because I was fighting some of these monsters, I did not have to take the extra peasant. So that's why I, you know, I, I puffed my guy up, did this, and then this guy protected me from collecting more peasants because I was fighting in that area. So anyway, that's the, for the two points I got. That one came out. The termite came over here. And so now, these are the two. We don't want to go to any of these spaces because we end up collecting more peasants. But these two sections of the city are, are not overrun yet, so we don't pick up extra peasants and clog up our deck. A new building comes out. It is the Ranger Academy, where a warrior who we have to get rid of plus a mage means we get a ranger. It's like the warrior gets trained to become a ranger. And this, once it gets built only has three rangers on it. So there will be a race to grab these rangers as fast as we can, although we're giving up warriors to do it. Okay, so that was it for me. That was pretty, pretty good. All right, and so the tournament came out, and it is Jen's turn. And she's got two measly peasants. But I didn't kick her out of the academy. So maybe she's going to do a little bit better because that uh, those studies allowed her to draw one more. Let it be a special one! Boom, it's a mage. Which means Jen totally wants this mage to go to this mage workshop. Although, Jen could have the mage come over here to upgrade. But no, no. She totally wants to use this mage workshop. So that's what she's all about. So, is she going to try and build another building? No. No. Jen is not going to build anything. So, she, we skip that. We're not upgrading any characters. We're not building. Jen's going right to business. Jen is going to have this mage come here. And Jen is going to... She's got these two. So, she could come over here and get herself a cleric. Or she could come over here and get a, uh, another, what you call it, another mage. And then she'd have one left over. I mean, you don't have to use your workers. You're just kind of wasteful. Or these two could band together and 
fight this skeleton down here, let's say. Okay, so the peasants are weak. They only do, but that's enough to kill a skeleton. And that meant if Jen wanted to come over here, she wouldn't have to pick up more um, peasants because the peasants are impressed by the fact that Jen is fighting. But as it happens, Jen's over here where she wasn't going to pick up peasants anyway. So Jen's done all of her worker placement. Now she resolves any orders she wants. She'll go on ahead and resolve uh, these. So she gets one point. Hoorah! Alrighty, boom. And that also had a draw two quests and uh, and get rid of one. So now Jen's got four cards. Hmm. All right, so she's got two of the same. Draw a step. If she keeps both of these, she could complete both of these in one turn. She's got a lot of mages. So I think she wants to keep them, and she will forget about... She's not going to go for Black Knight. She'll say, I'm not going to bother with that. She's still trying to collect her warriors. She's trying to collect her mages because they work well together at the levy station and um, all that. And so, once she draws two mages on a given turn, she will be able to complete both of these objectives. And um, and some other stuff happens. They're not completely the same. This one, she'll have two points at the end of the game if during her draw step she has two mages. Plus, um, she will get to upgrade her mages. And what that means is, when this quest is completed, she'll put this under here. And what this means is, all of her mages from now on have plus one strength if they ever go into battle alongside one of the prestige units which are the rangers, the paladins, or the shaman. So if Jen completes this quest, she'll want to have some... She'll want to have... Well, she'll probably have a lot of mages, and her mages can become stronger if they fight alongside prestige units. And this other one, if she completes this, this says... Um, in the main phase, if she if she gives up, if she trashes, she says goodbye to one of her mages, all other mages get plus two. So it's like uh, some kind of big super fireball effect that Jen will have as an ongoing power if she wants to. So she's got these two things that make her mages stronger. She's got this, which is just a lot of points. And all of that because she um, went to... Uh, oh, what did she do? Oh, she beat that monster. She, she beat that monster, which got that. Now, she's not done yet. She's visiting the mage workshop. And this says, um, Jen... Oh, no, the timing is bad on this. Shoot, shoot, shoot. I, I, I should have paid a bit more attention. This is not great. Uh, the mage's workshop is coming with the mage. You get to take three of your meeples that are in your um, lodgings and put them back in your bag so you can draw them quicker. And all the other players get to do that with one. Here's the problem. Her lodgings are almost empty, so now is a terrible time. It's a terrible time to go to the Mage Workshop. So instead, Jen's going to take this mage and come back over to the Mage Academy, where she hopes if she doesn't get bumped, she will get to draw two meeples next turn, if I don't bump her. Oh, by the way, I forgot. At the end of my turn, I should have drawn four, because Jen could see what meeples I've got, and she knows I've got three peasants, so one of them could potentially bump her, but she's hoping she doesn't so that on her next turn, she will have six meeples to play with instead of four because this one finishes their studies. So Jen came over here to try and set them up for the future. Jen actually fought a monster that gave her some quests and some points, and um, she is done. So at the end of the turn, she didn't build anything, but a new monster comes out, and it goes to the blue section. So now the blue section is overrun. And that's actually good for Jen. Because she was already here completing her studies, she won't have to worry about picking up this. Uh, but from now on... So actually, that's really great. Because now Jen knows she's less likely to get bumped by me. Because if I come to the blue section, I'm going to get stuck with another peasant. So Jen's pretty confident the Mage Academy will be... Un, uh, you know, she, she'll be able to finish her studies. So anyway, so that was it for her. And then she draws back up. And all right. So her corruption goes away. One, two, three... Four. All right, one corruption, two peasants, and a warrior for her next turn. Back to me, though. I've got three, because that corruption doesn't do me any good. Do I want to build? What do I want to do? Um, I didn't get any of my specials out, so I can't upgrade, because i still got to draw them over there. Hmm. You know what? I think this is going to be a quick turn for me. I'm not going to build anything. I mean, I'd like to build this Ranger Academy, but I'd want to do this on a turn when I've got a Mage and a Warrior so that I could use this right away because there will only ever be three Rangers that will come out of this Academy. And if I build this, but then Jen gets first dibs on it, because I could, you know, so that's not a good th idea. So I'm not going to build anything this turn. I don't have anybody upgrade because I've just got Peasants. I'm just going to send all three of my Peasants to the Villages, thereby getting rid of one of them and getting another Warrior. Although, ah! This area is overrun, so I get another peasant back. So I'm, main, I'm maintaining an equal number of peasants to get that warrior, but that's fine. I'll do it. 
So because this is an overrun area, another peasant had to show up. Somebody was afraid. I didn't fight them off. So there we go. But I got myself another warrior. So I'm just trying to build up for warriors um, because I need them to complete a lot of these quests. Alrighty. So that was that. A really quick, easy turn for me. I just got another warrior and maintained uh, right uh, peasant parity. And then I draw... Right. So I didn't build anything. No monsters were fought. I just draw four more. One, two, three, four. And hey, there's a warrior... And three peasants. That'll be my next turn. Jen's turn. She made it. Looks like you made it. It's graduation day. Jen gets to draw two more meeples because I didn't kick her out. And what the heck? Man. All right. It's just pe all peasants all the time. Four peasants, a warrior, and some corruption. What is she going to do? What to do? What to do? Jen is going to start upgrading her warriors so they become more powerful. And she's got four... So she could build a building, and then she'd still have two peasants. Hmm. And remember, building a building, the sooner you build a building, you get these rewards. I think Jen will, and she'll do it without getting more, and she will... Ooh. No, 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 no. Oh! Arr! She'd like to go to this levee station and make her peasants more powerful to fight another monster. But that means she has to use her... No, okay, yeah, so... She's changing her mind. She's calling an audible. She's doing that because these two guys are going to come over there and that means the other guy's going to be able to fight. And so these two, but she's still going to build something without um, having to take on more peasants. She will build. She will build. She will build the branch root in, which by building over here gives her a cleric. All right. So she's done with that. Now she goes on to her main placement. Warrior plus a peasant at the levy station, makes all her peasants stronger, so that this peasant can single-handedly, single-handedly defeat this termite that recently showed up in the blue section, because he needs to do three points of damage. She's done all her worker placement, now she resolves them. She will resolve this first, which gives her another warrior. And because this is an overrun, she doesn't take on any peasants. Alrighty, and now her peasants have plus two, so it's three, so she defeats this termite. Hooray! Which gives her another point. So she's caught up to me. And as an extra reward for defeating the termite, she gets another warrior. Boom. And um, she goes on ahead and keeps this for safekeeping because she might have quests about defeating lots of termites or something. Who knows? Alrighty. So that was that. Very nice turn indeed. So now she's got to clean up. These uh, all exhausted people all go there. She needs a new building. And this slides over for a new monster to come out. And it's another termite. And if anybody beats this termite, they get a cleric for free because this termite's over near the cathedral. The cathedral is now completely overrun. If somebody wants to use the branch root in, they have to take on two peasants because this area is overrun. But it means we can go to all the other areas and not be bothered by excess peasants. Nice. Okay. So that was it for her. She's going to draw back up four. And I think her bag is, is empty. Yep, so everything goes back in the sack. She needs to start getting some more of these mages. Because, I mean, this Ranger Academy, but, yeah, right, we'll worry about that in a bit. One, two, three, four. All right, so she pulled her cleric and three peasants. With that cleric, well, it's not going to make much good to go to the Branch Root Inn when you have no mages to get the bonus of going there with the cleric. Curses. All righty, but she'll worry about that in a bit because it's my turn now. And what am I going to do? Man, I'm inclined to... This levy station is working out fantastically. Um, yeah, that means I could... Which means... So if I do the same thing, um, you know, get another warrior, pump up my existing to beat another guy. Um, let's see, what did I want to beat? Oh, to beat this other termite to give myself another cleric. And that means this guy could get me another uh, peasant. So first... Okay, I was just thinking about why I haven't done this yet. Right now, first, I'm just going to use one peasant. I get another peasant. I'm going to build... And let's go on ahead and build the. Let's go ahead and build the manor house because I have I do have one black knight I think don't I? Wasn't I going to do that? Oh, I didn't do that. I did the levy station instead. All right, let's do the coliseum, and let's put the coliseum over in this neck of the woods so that I draw two more quests and keep one. Bippity bop. All right, so. Um, draw yellows. I think January has two, though. She would have liked to have gotten that. And then that means if she completes this quest name, all of her yellow mages for the rest of the game become stronger against tougher. Because we're still fighting level one monsters now because we haven't been fighting much. Or defeat a monster with a black knight and a peasant to um, make all your peasants plus one when they fight alongside a black knight. 
That's really cool. I think Jen's going to dump that. But she could dump other ones from her. I'm going to dump that. I'm going to keep this. And I want to get some Black Knights to be able to complete this and make my peasants stronger. Because I keep picking up the peasants. I might as well at least uh, get them more powerful if they fight alongside Black Knights. All right, so that was that. Which means my original plan of doing the levy station fighting, maybe I want to recruit some Black Knights instead. Which I do. So, um, the, uh, the building I built, which gave me some quests, maybe call an audible. Now, I'm going to do my... Stuff I was thinking about fighting the termite, but instead I'm gonna go to the castle and I'm gonna go to the university. These are not overrun, so I don't get any more peasants. So this gives me another mage. This gives me a black knight. So I'm getting more cool specialist types. And that was it for me. And then I draw four. One, two, three, four. Hey, there's a mage. And some corruption. And a couple of peasants. Alright, and that was it. Nope, there's one more in my bag, which is more corruption. Curse of corruption. All right, Jen's turn. All righty. So, I think she will definitely upgrade her mage. So, and this doesn't cost her any points, even though she has two. It doesn't cost her any. Um, and is she going to build something? Or is she going to use all three of these? I think so. I think she's just going to upgrade. So, it doesn't cost anything to go to a level two cleric. So, Jen is the first one to upgrade her characters. Uh, level two cleric. Still only does one point of damage, like a level 1 cleric. But during the development phase, if you have any clerics and one or more corruption in your tavern, draw extra tiles. So now, um, when Jen draws, if she draws a cleric and she has corruption, the clerics will fight the corruption. So the corruption will start doing stuff for her and it'll let her draw more stuff. So she has upgraded her clerics. She's not going to build anything. She's got three... Which means she could go out and fight any monster she wants, which I think is what she's going to do. She's just going to defeat this termite. Three peasants! Ah, come at you, termite! Because, remember, she gets a cleric for her troubles. And, oops, sorry, this goes over here. Ha-ha! This is why I watched the Klingon subtitles turned on. So, Jen wants to recruit clerics because they are better. And so that was it. All she did was she just fought one monster, She did, or and she did build. So, at the end of the turn, a new... the the. Birch and Twig Tavern comes out, a new monster comes out, and it's another Termite, okay, which comes over here to the yellow. So now the yellow is overrun. And then she draws back up four. One, two, three, four. Oh, whoops. Ah, I drew five. Drat, gotta go back. All right, draw four. Oh, that was a much better draw before. Oh, dear. All right. Well, still, she's got peasants, so she could do the levy station, or she could do... Or she could do the Colosseum, which is just a way to score points with your excess peasants if you don't get kicked out by other players. So that's not bad. All right, anyway, though. So that was it. It's my turn and my stupid corruption. And um, do I... Or, oh, and by the way, this is Jen's Cleric as well. That obviously went back there too. So am I going to build? There is only two more places to build. Once all the building spots have done, these don't matter anymore. There will be no more pl uh, chances to build. And I really want this Ranger Academy to come into play. But I have not had a turn where I've gotten a mage and a warrior at the same time. Drat! You know what? I think I'm going to try and draw more next turn so I can up my chances of build, of doing that. To, all right, so this is what I'm ultimately planning on, which means I've got these. Am I going to build something now? No. I'm not going to do anything. I'm, I'm skipping all of this. And now for my placement, my mage is going to go to the academy so I can hopefully draw more later. I've got two guys. Two, um, which means I could, I could come over here to get a... Uh, cleric, I'd lose one of these, but I'd get one back because it's overrun. Or I could just fight. Let's just fight. Except, no, with only two, I'd have to fight this skeleton, which of course is undead, and I've got a quest. I don't want to fight undead. So, buttons. But, you know what? Let's go to the warrior's hut. That got built a while ago. That gives me another warrior. And it gives me two more quests. Draw two, keep one. Oh, okay. I, I've already decided I'm not going to go heavy into clerics, so I don't want that. But, you know, this is have a shaman and two mages, or have six mages to get points at the end of the game. It's worth one victory point for each humanoid I have killed over the course of the game. So, I got some quests. Alright, so I got another warrior, and I'm saving up so I can draw two more, so that'll stay there. As you can see, it's start, I'm starting to build up a big coterie of people. So, didn't build... Did not find anything. I'm done. Draw four. Which is you, uh, Corruption. Everything goes back in the bag now. 
So things are starting to speed up. But you can see why you want to, if at all possible, avoid getting these peasants so that you can just draw your cool stuff faster. But anyway, draw on three more. One, two, three. Darn it! I want the mage and the British! Well, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But anyway, that was it. Hopefully I'm going to draw two more and I'll find, because I do have... There are, there are some more yellows in here, so hopefully that'll pay off the Academy. But in the meantime, it is Jen's turn. All right. So, Jen has no Cleric, so she's not making use of her Corruption, unfortunately. Is she going to upgrade her Warrior? Or is she going to use her Warrior to get a Black Knight? Or go to the Coliseum to score victory points? Or make her other guys stronger? <sighs> Yeah, I think she's not going to build anything. She's not going to upgrade. She's just going to do the same levy station trick. This guy all by himself is a three, and she's going to beat... Is she? Is she's the exterminator. She's the Roach Motel. She's taking out another termite. Nice. Okay, so we revolve this. This gives her another warrior. Her peasants have plus two. That's enough to defeat this termite, which gets her one victory point. And a, another mage. Boom. All righty, so a quick turn for Jen. All right, so she beat a monster. She didn't build anything. A new one comes out, and it goes into the black area of town. Now this area is overrun. Okay, and it's another termite. All right, and you can see how Jen's really benefiting from beating those. She draws four. One, two, three, four. Arr. All right, draw too many. Try this again. There's five in the bag. One, two, three, four. Leave one in the bag. There we go. Ah, uh, no! There's the yellow gen needed for the Ranger Academy! No! But in the meantime, my Academy days are over. I'm drawn two. I want to see that yellow. I want to see that yellow. There's, a, there's two yellows in here. Please, please, please. No! Peasants! Peasants. Peasants, my precious. All right, so I've got four peasants. So that's something. That means... If I do this with Station, each one of these peasants does three points of damage. I could take out three monsters this turn if I don't bother building. And I just use that Levy Station. Yeah, let's totally do that. I mean, this is a warrior-heavy game. So, three points of damage, three points of damage, three points of damage. I do, right, let's go on ahead and take out a Termite so I can get some freebies. And let's take out another Bandit. And let's take out another Bandit. Alrighty, because I don't want to fight undead. So, that's it. I, I just did the Levy Station so everybody got really strong. I had a Big turn. Everybody's taken out. One, two, three. So what did I get? I got um, one, two, three, four, five points. Nice. One, two, three, four, five. And you can imagine, this levy station might have been at the bottom of the deck. It might not have appeared. This game could be playing out very differently. Also, for beating that termite, I get another warrior. And that's that. And I haven't fought any undead yet. Hooray. So... We, oh my gosh, we need all kinds of new monsters. We need to draw three. And the Dark Council arrives. Put this aside for a sec. Draw two more. Alrighty. Uh, now, um, right, so there's, we're still in level ones, but level twos are about to start showing up. This goes into the blue section of town. This goes, oh, here we have our first level two monster, um, which we have to do five points of damage to beat. It's worth two victory points. And if you beat this, your black knights get plus one whenever they fight alongside warriors. This goes into the blue section of town, and I got to draw one more. And uh, it goes into the blue section. The blue section, so now I can put this wherever I want. I'll go ahead and put it over here so the other sections aren't overrun. And uh, this is a troll shaman. Beat this thing, and black knights all do plus one damage for the rest of the game. So that's very cool. And things have bu uh, have gotten a bit more exciting, folks, because the dark count. There are three of these dark council arrive cards. One in the in the first third, the second third, and one near the bottom. When the last one comes out, the dark council itself does arrive. These cards way up here. Um, which are the final bosses that can give us tons of points, but they have variable requirements. Or, or extra points can be gotten. Like, if I fight the Termite Lord, I get one victory point if you don't use uh, mages when you fight him, plus, randomly, one extra point for each peasant who fights the Termite Lord. So, these are potentially big in-game points when we get to the end of the deck. We have a couple of rounds where we can fight all of these big final bosses. But in the meantime, the first couple of times we see these, everybody gets more corrupt. And these don't go into lodgings. They go directly into the bag. So, uh, we've got some more clogging stuff going on, although that's more opportunity for Jen's Cleric to do some business. Um, but... 
The other thing is, in addition to putting these, from now on, instead of drawing four meeples every round, we're drawing five. Because things have just, uh, you know, we're getting one step closer to the end. Remember, like I said, this deck is the timer. So that was a big move for me. And uh, because we're into the second phase, I'm drawing five meeples, including, there's some more corruption here. One, two, three, four. Let me see a yellow. Come on, let me see that yellow. Nope, there's that corruption. Drat. Drat, drat, drat. Okay, and it's Jen's turn. And she's got her four queued up. And, um, oh, yeah, so we got, and so this is definitely not a place to come because you end up get picking up two if you do any of these actions unless you fight these off. And now there's level twos that are worth more points. Um, so you need to do five points of damage to that, plus your Black Knights will be upgraded if you have Black Knights. So far, I'm the only one who's actually gone into the realm of Black Knights. Maybe Jen wants to, although all she's got is Warriors. She needs Peasants and Warriors to get a Black Knight. She's also got this Corruption, which would have been nice if she'd had a Cleric, but she didn't. Um, so she's got two Warriors this turn. I mean, she could just score three points by having him fight at the uh, Coliseum if she doesn't get bumped out. She's got the Levy Station. She's, uh... Yeah, what is she going to do with two Warriors? Well, one thing... Oh, I know what Jen is going to do. Because I haven't really talked about these yet much. But I think this turn... Is Jen going to build anything? No, but Jen is going to start upgrading her warriors. So she's not building. She is upgrading her warriors. That doesn't cost her any points. So now she's upgraded her clerics, and she now has level two warriors that basically just do more damage. So she's done with that. Now, Jen, I, you know, these have been available the whole time. I've kind of forgot about them. I was so tired of focusing. But Jen is going to do a quest of shattering the darkness. This is an extra spot where she can go to, where if she sends a corruption. And a warrior. Now she's going to lose this warrior forever because it'll be lost to the darkness. But Jen will draw two and pick one card. And she will collect this. This is worth at least two points. But if she shatters the darkness four times over the course of the game, she'll have 13 points at the end of the game. So Jen went to the tower. Uh, she fought some corruption. She lost her warrior. But she draws two and keeps one quest. And, um, right. Right. And, and, she, and th since this was not overrun, she did not have to worry about taking on. So, she's got all these quests now. Hey, maybe it's worth... Um, because you want to get rid of your peasants over the course of the game, but this means you want to hold on to at least five of them for the quest for the common meeple. So, she's got a side. All right, she just got rid of a warrior. You know what? I think maybe trying to get to five warriors is a bit too much. She's going to drop that and focus on these things instead. Really focus on all of that. All right, but she completed that, which means it's two points at least, but it could be a lot more if she continues to shatter the darkness. And so, she didn't fight anybody, no new monsters come out, she didn't build, and we do have a new tower thing, Seeking Corruption. Uh, this is a place where if you seek corruption one, two, or three times, you get one, three, or six points. Um, and you can do it when you've got mages and corruption. This becomes another worker placement slot. So suddenly, corruption has a function. Although, what this really does is, you're getting a point and giving up one of your quests. And that can be good, because remember, if you can't complete all your quests at the end of the game, you lose points for them. So you might have a quest you just can't finish. Seeking corruption would let you get rid of it by using that corruption, plus getting points. So Jen did that. That was quick and easy. Alrighty. And then she draws six. No, five. One, two... And then, uh, gotta draw four more. Whee! One, two, three, four. There it is. One, two, th or one, two, three, four, five. Oops, drew one too many. There she is, five. But that's it, folks. She's got her warrior and her, so she's gonna go to the Ranger Academy. Because finally, I mean, she just didn't want to be uh, pushed out. Right, so anyway, but it's my turn. I've got one corruption, which does me no good. Uh, yes, I, I don't have a mage, so I cannot seek corruption. I don't have a cleric, so I can't face the darkness. So I can't do either of those. Um, this is saying I get two points if I um, put a cleric here and defeat a monster, an undead, which I'm never going to do because I've got a quest to avoid doing that. But what am I going to do? Am I going to finally upgrade my warriors like Jen has started doing? Am I going to do the old levy station again and go for some really big heavy hitters? That might be nice. Yeah, if I don't build anything, and I skip that, and I don't upgrade, and I say, let's go to the levy station and get another warrior. Meanwhile, these two guys... Ah! No, they do they do three apiece. So, two combined can beat 
the Troll Shaman. Dum bum ba. So I don't want to fight the undead because I've got a quest about that. I come over here, I defeat the Troll Shaman. All of my Black Knights now do one, two, three points of damage for the rest of the game, which means I definitely... Oh, and let's see. Don't forget, I up... Oh, no, this was Jen upgrading her warrior. I forgot about that. That should have gone back into her bag. So anyway, um, I want to start recruiting Black Knights now because by default, they do three. And I can upgrade the Black Knight as well. Um, so that... Uh, uh, basically, let me, let me draw more stuff. And that could be very, very handy as well as I go up and upgrade path with them. So anyway, I beat a monster. One, two, three, four, five. So a new one comes out. And it goes into the yellow area. So this is now overrun. And this is a tree beast, which uh, will make clerics stronger. Clerics will be stronger if they fight alongside warriors, if somebody beats this tree beast. So that's it. Jen's turn. She is going to, sadly, have to get an extra to build to do the Ranger's Academy, which we've been waiting for the whole game. She'll put it over here. It gives her a cleric. She will send both of these over here. She'll have to say goodbye to this warrior because he's going to be trained as a ranger. And this space can only give out three rangers. So there were three when this got built. And uh, Jen got the cleric for doing that. And she gave up her warrior to get a ranger. Jen is the first to have a ranger. And to remind her what she does, she takes a ranger special reminder card. Which doesn't work very well with the green screen, does it? Oh no. Um, as you can see... The ranger is super strong, the, and the these prestige they never level up, but um, basically does three points of damage and gets an extra point whenever defeating monsters. Plus, remember, doesn't Jen have something else about being able? She puts this over here as a new type of character she's got. She wasn't. Oh, there was a quest I think I forget something that would upgrade somebody. Oh, I don't remember. Where, it's, it must be gone now. But anyway, so that was it. That was a quick turn for Jen. She's the first to get rangers. Nice, nice, nice. Well, she had to take another peasant to do it. A new building comes out. And it is my turn. One, two, three, four, five, six. And oh, by the way, I should have drawn. I forgot to. I should have drawn five. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. And hey, on my turn, I'm going to be able to go and recruit a ranger as well. And um, I could also use the mage's workshop. Although I'd have to take on another peasant to do it. But if I get a ranger, use the ranger's workshop. Yeah, that's going to be good. Am I going to build something? No, I'm not. So I just go right to my worker placement. I come to the ranger's workshop, which means I do have to take on a peasant because this area is overrun, unfortunately. Drat. But I come over here. This area is not on a run. I say goodbye to this warrior to get another ranger. And uh, I have one peasant left over. This peasant will... Go back to the Mage Academy. And hopefully... Oh, no, no, no. I would have to take on two peasants to come here. So instead, this guy will come over here to the Colosseum. And if he survives, if, if Jen doesn't bump me, I get an extra victory point. That's not bad. So that's a pretty good turn. Alrighty. Even when I, a turn where I drew two corruption. So that was pretty nice. I got a ranger. And I got a peasant. But this also says when I... Wait. So, actually, no, these haven't come back yet. This is important, the turn order. So, first of all, before I activate... No, no, I, I, no I'll activate this first. But that just means I get the... Right, so I get the ranger. Right. Um, then I will activate this, which says the current player... So, that was there. And uh, this guy, right. So, this guy, the current player can take three meeples. I'll take this ranger I just got and a couple of warriors put them back in my bag, so I'm pretty much all but guaranteed to draw them faster. And all other players get to do one. Jen will take her ranger and put it in her bag as well for the mage's workshop. Although, to come here, I did have to take... Uh, I don't know if I want to do that. But still, I want to get that ranger quicker because um, they get you more points and they're super strong and the bigger monsters are coming out now. And the game is starting to accelerate where we have a lot of cool stuff. We can fight. We can keep on working our way up. There's still one more building waiting to be built. And eventually, we'll start drawing six a turn. We'll start fighting the big bosses. And we'll reveal who um, completed the most quests uh, at the end of Meeples and Monsters. And now, folks, if you'd like to hear some final thoughts, you can hit that eye in the top right corner screen or follow the show notes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.